Alright, so we've been looking at graphing polynomials and then other kind of variations. Things where we just had x raised to a power where we had these uh, other expressions where we had multiple ones of those added together. And we actually we had a, a situation like this that we were actually able to solve. Okay, and how did we, it wasn't this exact problem, but how did we handle it when there was a situation like this? We had some binomial raised to a power, and we wanted the derivative of that. Yeah, we had to foil it out and figure out what that would equal. Okay, now I don't know about you, but I really don't care to multiply 3x squared minus 5 out to the sixth power. All right, so there's got to be a better way, and there is. Um, what we're looking at here is what's called the chain rule, and it's called the chain rule because basically we have two functions kind of linked together, and they're linked together here using function composition. All right, so our goal today actually is to get used to recognizing the two functions and um, and we'll look a little bit at the chain rule itself as well but I really want you to get used to seeing the two functions here okay so here's the uh, here's kind of the basic premise of what we're starting with all right we recognize that y is written as the composition of two functions. All right? And there's some no notation I'm wanting you to get used to because the chain rule uses it. All right? We have this function g, and it has this other function inside of it. So you can see we have this outer function and an inner function. And often what we'll do is we'll rewrite that inner function as u. All right, so that we could just simply say this is y equals g of u. Yes? So in this case, g or f of x, because we're doing g of f of x, it would be f of x is 3x squared minus 5, and then g of x is x to the sixth, so when you put f of x into it, it becomes 3 squared, uh, 3x three squared minus 5 all raised to the sixth power. Yes, okay. okay, yes. What Zach was just saying here, u is this inner function, and in this case, the inner function is the 3x squared minus the 5, Okay. That's going to be our u. Then, if we look at this function in terms of u, it's simply u to the sixth. Does that make sense? So we're recognizing an outer function and an inner function. Let's take a look at a couple others here. Suppose we have y equals the square root of x squared plus 3x plus 5. What would be our inner function, u? x squared plus 3x plus 5. There you go. x squared plus 3x plus 5. And what would our outer function be? The square root of u. Okay? All right? Square root of u. Or, more useful for differentiation, u to the one half. Okay? Here's another one, y equals 2x plus 5 to the third power. What's our inner function? 2x plus, plus, plus 5. And g of u then would be? 
U cubed. There we go. U cubed. Y equals the square root of 2x cubed plus 3x. What's our inner function? Okay. And g of u? X, or u to the one hand. Yeah, u to the one hand. Okay. I know we're doing a ton of these, but I want you to really get this down. Okay. How about our last one? U is... What is it? The, oh, is it like the fourth? Three credit. Yeah, or vinyl cutter or some kind of tech. Uh, some kind of All right, so here our inner function is this, and our outer function would be u cubed. Okay. So, so um, really, this is the biggest thing to recognize. Okay, the biggest thing to recognize when you're doing the chain rule. Okay, the problem is this. Okay. If I were to take the derivative of this, I wouldn't be taking dy dx. I would be finding dy du. All right, so if I made it 3u squared, that's dy du. But I don't want the derivative with respect to u, I want the derivative with respect to x. So how do we get that? That's what the chain rule gives us. Okay? Now, before we get to that, take a moment here. I know we just talked through some of these. But take a moment here to identify your... Um, f of x, which is the u, and your g of u, okay? I don't really like the directions on here, but identify your u and your g of u for these three, or four, okay? You can talk it over with the neighbor if you'd like. Do you know what class is under us? No, GBS. No. Is it a bakery? No, it's, no bakery's no, on the other side. There's still plenty of more over. It's a smaller class. Yeah. Oh, it's Cohen. No, but it's not Sanders Auditorium because Cohen has Sanders and Sanders has like first or something else. So he has to go. I just got that. Yeah, he has. Yeah, but I have the other one. Oh, really? Yeah. The department chairs, Sanders is a department chair, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they don't have their own classrooms. No. Nope. Why is that? Like, you're a department chair. Well, they only teach four classes because they have to go around and do observations of people in their departments, too. So. Oh, yeah, I think he chose, like, all the, like, the tables and stuff.
So before we were given Aquamax, and we had to find U and G again, like on the, when we were doing the examples at first. Well, we were given Y. Uh -huh. Y equals something. And, and you saw it as G of F of X. So, the F of X, the inner function, is your U. The outer function is G of U. All right, who has an answer for A? Mia? U is 3x plus 10. Okay. G of U is U cubed. U cubed. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, how about our second one, B? Yes. Uh, U is 2x plus 4. Okay. And G of U is U to the negative 1. Okay, good. All right. U to the negative 1, or 1 over U. Okay? Good. How about C? Who has that one? U, X squared minus 3X. U is X squared minus 3X, yep. And then G of U is U to the 1 half. U to the 1 half. There we go. Sixth grade students, may I have your attention? If you are assigned a fifth grade shadow, please report to the flagpole outside the learning commons at this time. Thank you. All right. All right. How about our last one, D? Neil? Um, U equals 3x minus x squared over 10. It's what? Uh, that over 10. That over 10? No. Nah, I'd leave the 10 out of it at this point. Okay, never mind. Because what's your, what's uh, G of you? Can I put that in you? Okay, then it's U to the negative 3 over 10? Who's Who's it over 10? 10? I don't know. I U know. to the negative 3 I know I need a negative times 10. 10. Yeah. Or you can make it oh. 10 over U to the negative 3. You were kind of thinking it as though the whole thing were cubed. But, but, yeah, as it is, there we have the inner function, then the outer function, okay? But you'll notice each of these U's, or G of U's, I should say, look like the things that we were differentiating yesterday, okay? We have this, um, just something raised to a power. It might have a constant multiple in front of it but it's something raised to a power, and that's how a lot of these chain rule things work. What if an x would be in the numerator? What if an x would be in the numerator? Then that would be a case where we couldn't, um, we would actually use the chain rule for the denominator, but if we had 10x, that would be a case where we'd have to use a quotient rule. So we couldn't, that would be a little more complicated. Okay. Now, one other one, um, we haven't gotten two trig functions yet, but let's see what we can do with this one. Let's say y equals the sine of x squared plus 4, okay? What would u equal in this case? x squared plus 4? Yeah, x squared plus 4, and then g of u, yeah, sine of u, okay, and later on when we do trig functions, um, we'll have to be able to recognize that, okay. So, again, this is the key, this is a key to even being able to do the um, the chain rule. So let's take a look at the chain rule itself and uh, see how it works here. I had told you if I just found the derivative of this g of u, 
that would be dy du, okay? And it's not the same as multiplication, but it kind of looks like it. Suppose I had dy du, I want to end up with dy dx. So, again, it's not the same as multiplication, but what could I multiply by to get to here? du dx. du dx. All right? And actually, that gives us what the chain rule tells us to do. You're going to take the derivative of y with respect to u, so you'll take the derivative of this, leaving u whatever it was. Then you're going to multiply it by the derivative of this. Okay? And that will help us, that will give us, finally, the dy dx that we're looking for. So let's look at that formally, and then we'll... Um, that we'll explain and try to, okay? So it says, if y equals g of f of x, which is the same as g of u, then dy dx equals g prime of f of x times f prime of x. Or using the u's, dy dx equals dy du times du dx. I'm going to put that into plain English. It's the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. Okay. The key with that, though, is make sure that you leave the inner function alone when you're taking the derivative of the outer function. And we'll see what that means here in just a moment. So that's G prime. So let's go back to the examples we were working on, okay? We already identified for, for y equals 3x squared minus 5 equals 6. We said there's got to be a better way of doing this one than foiling it all out. So here's what it is. u is the 3x squared minus 5. And g of u... is u to the sixth, right? So if I'm taking, if I'm going to use the chain rule, dy du is this derivative of the g of u, okay? Here's dy du. Well, what's the derivative of u to the sixth? Six u to the fifth. Did I say fifth? Six u to the fifth. To the fifth. All right. What's uh, the derivative of u with respect to x? Yeah, six x. All right, let me get this out of the way here. Give ourselves some more room to work. All right. Okay. So, if I'm finding dy dx. I want to find dy du 
and multiply it by du dx. So dy du was a 6 u to the fifth, but I don't want to have a u in my answer because I want it in terms of x's, right? So I'm going to put that 3x squared minus 5 back. So 6 times 3x squared minus 5, and that's now to the 5th power, okay? Then I need to multiply that by a 6x. So here's my dy du, here's my du dx. And then one question that always comes up is how much do we need to simplify, okay? Um, I don't usually simplify if I'm foiling or something like that, okay, unless I'm going to take another derivative. But I would go ahead and simplify this down to 36x times 3x squared minus 5 to the fifth. Okay. Can't we just get a derivative of y? Hmm? Can't we just get a derivative straight from what we had? Oh. From the one that you changed. Yeah, just by looking at it, eventually our goal is to just be able to look at that and write down that. Or at least write down this. And then you might have to simplify a little bit after that. Okay. So that, that's what we're working towards here. Okay. Okay. Let's work through some of the other ones we mentioned earlier. <clears throat> okay. We had said the inner function here was x squared plus 3x plus 5. I'm not going to write out quite as much as we did up here, but what would the derivative of that inner function be? 2x. 2x plus 3, okay? And what would the derivative of that outer function, dy du, equal? One half u to the minus one half, okay? So, now we need to multiply those together. We have 1 half times the 2x plus 3, or I'll show the step before that even. Since this is 1 half u to the negative 1 half, it'll be 1 half u was the x squared plus 3x plus 5, and that's going to be to the negative 1 half then we'll multiply that by 2x plus 3. So here's the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. And then because this is to the first power, I would go ahead and distribute the 1 half to it to simplify. So I'd get x plus 3 halves times the x squared plus 3x plus 5 to the negative 1 half. I would, all I would do to simplify this would be to take the 1 half to the 2x and the 3. I can't distribute it in here because it's got an exponent, but I can distribute it to that. So, yes. 
Wouldn't that be x plus 3 uh, three house over the root of yeah, you, if you wanted, you could write it as x plus 3 halves over the square root of all that, but you don't need to. And in fact, um, especially as we move forward, you're probably not going to want to put square roots back in. You'll probably want to just leave them as fractional exponents. Okay. It's easier. Yeah, it is easier. The less simplifying you have to do, the better. So, all right, so you guys seem to be getting the hang of that pretty well, but, 